I'm going to focus on seven characters that can help you and your partner to have a successful relationship. So it's more like the, the, the characters to possess and look out for in a partner in order to have a successful relationship. So there's seven things I want to talk about. And the first character that can help a person build a successful relationship is discipline. I am telling you the truth. There is no way you can build a successful relationship, especially a relationship like marriage, without discipline. You must have discipline. And you must also look for somebody who has discipline. And if you had been lacking in discipline, you have to build up your discipline. Because the truth of the matter is that um, relationship requires commitment. And you cannot be committed if you are not disciplined. If you are easily moved by any, you know, anyone you see, especially the opposite sex, you know, you easily move by, you know, the beauty, the looks of a person, you easily move by what a person says, you easily move by those things around the person, you will not be disciplined. So discipline is a necessary character for anybody who wants to build a successful relationship. You must learn to be disciplined. To be disciplined means to be able to keep to your words, to be able to you know, follow up with the right actions in your relationship, to be able to have self-control, to be able to, you know, communicate in a way that your emotions does not overtake you. So it's like discipline all around. So whatever trap the enemy wants to set for you, he's going to set in the area of discipline. If you're not disciplined, you're going to go. That's why you see a lot of people do things that they regret, you know, things that, you know, they, they will not have done. It's not that they, they did it intentionally. It's not that they wanted to hurt their partner. It's simply because they lack discipline. And I want to say to you, please, as, as a child of God, before you begin, you know, serious relationship or, you know, marriage or whatever, Ask God to fill you with grace for discipline. I'm saying this, it is the number one thing you need, the number one character you need for a successful relationship, discipline. So whatever you think is your weakness, you know, you need to ask God to deliver you, to help you, because the enemy walks through your weakness. He walks through your weakness to bring you down and there is nothing you're going to do. So you just ask God for grace to be disciplined. And for me, one of the ways to be a disciplined person is to abide by the word, the word of God, you know. I remember David saying, how can a young man keep his way clean? He said, by taking heed to your word. So when you read the word of God, try to practice it. Try to Believe the word and practice it. And as you practice the word, you are building discipline in your life. As you practice the word. And that's why I'm saying this. I've said to people, I had a program in Pretoria last weekend. And I was saying to them, a time is going to come where the marriages that are going to succeed are going to be mostly people who walk according to the word. Because the temptation in the world today is in another level. Now you don't go out looking for a, a girl, a lady. They send you to your phone. You, it's on the TV. It's on the internet. You know, people can watch porn from their houses. People can do anything. I mean, they can commit any crime from their homes. So this is a time where everybody who wants to succeed in relationship, especially in marriage, must be disciplined. So make up your mind that you are going to be disciplined. You're going to cut off from anything that is going to challenge you. Ask God to help you. So that's the first character to possess for a successful relationship, discipline. Now the second one is peace, a peaceable person. For you to succeed, you need to pursue peace. 
Bible says those who are peacemakers shall be called the sons of God. Listen, in any relationship, there will be challenges. And for me, to be peaceable is to seek what is right in the right way. You know, be peaceable. Don't, don't start trouble. Don't always want things your way. You know, seek for the prosperity of the relationship, not for your own prosperity. If you want to have a lasting relationship, peace must be part of your life. You must pursue peace. You must look for ways to, you know, communicate in a peaceable way. You must look for ways to do your actions in a peaceable way. Peace for me is number one blessing of marriage. That's the way I see it. In fact, the number one blessing of life for me is peace. If there is anything I will choose, I will easily choose peace above everything. In fact, personally, one of the ways I know those to relate to me, those that I can have peace with. So if somebody comes to you and you can see that this person is not peaceable, you're not going to have peace with this person. It's a clear sign that that person is not right for you. The Bible says when God speaks, he will speak peace. So be peaceable and look for people who are peaceable. Look for a, a person who is peaceable. That's the second thing that is very important in building a successful relationship. Peace. Very important. Now, the third one is gentleness. To be gentle. Gentleness is very important. Now, I will see gentleness as considering others. In other words, considering other people's feelings and well-being. You must have a gentle spirit. So, it's, you see, I've said this to people. The greatest enemy of love is selfishness. If you get into a relationship and you are just about yourself, 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 what is good for you, what you want, what is not going to work you must come to a point where you are trying to please somebody else. And that is why I keep saying to people, the reason God gave us eyes, we cannot see our faces, is because he wants us to focus on others. So to be gentle is to consider other people's feelings, you know, in what you do, in how you talk, in how you, you know, treat them, in your actions. Don't just do things anyhow. Be gentle with others and look for somebody who is gentle that is very important so number three is gentleness number four easy to be entreated that's the fourth character that i see is needed for a successful and a lasting relationship you must be somebody that is easy to be entreated not a difficult person you know to be easy to be entreated is like being open to understanding. Don't say it's either my way or the highway. When you see people who are very stubborn, they cannot compromise, they cannot be open to understanding. They want it either their way or the highway. Run. Because you are not going to have anything working out in that kind of relationship. So, the character that will work out a successful relationship is somebody who is easy to be entreated. You must be open to understanding. Now, I, I'm not saying you don't have your opinion. You have your opinion, you have your stand, but be open to listening to your partner's opinion. You know, be, be open to reasoning, be open to, you know, dialogue, to communication, to understanding. You know, put yourself in your partner's position at all times if you want to resolve things the right way. You know, don't just judge from where you are because you may not see the full picture. Be open and be transparent and learn how to communicate and compromise. Number five, you must have a character that is full of mercy and good works. Full of mercy and good works. For me, being merciful and showing good works is showing love, is the way you show love. Love is merciful. Love is, you know, kind, is, is caring. Love easily forgive. So be merciful. Don't be judgmental. When your partner makes mistake or, you know, there is a mistake happening, always try to understand and say, you know, you are human. You can also make mistakes. So be full of mercy 
and good works. And also look for somebody who is full of mercy and good works. That kind of person you can easily work with. That is very important. Now, number six is no partiality. No partiality. You see, if there is anything that can destroy trust in a relationship is when you are partial. When you are partial in your judgment, in the way you do things, you know, I, I've seen situations where, for, for instance, um, a couple, uh, uh, two people coming together in marriage, you find out that some people always have issues with um, um, how to distribute what they have among their parents, you know. So you find out that one person wants everything to benefit his or her parents not thinking about the parents of the other person, the family of the other person, you know, everything to benefit, you know, him or her, not considering the other person. That's being partial. When we came together in marriage with my wife, I said to her, your family is my family. Now, this is the way we are going to help our family. We, we are going to focus on the ones who have um, emergency issues. In fact, if my brother says he needs money, and her brother say he needs money. At the same time, we look at the situation that is emergency, that needs, you know, urgent attention. And that is the one we'll attend to. It doesn't matter whose brother it is. So you must come to a point where you learn not to be partial. You must take a stand on what is right and look for somebody who is not partial. Don't be partial. That's what that passage says in James chapter 3, verse 17. No partiality. Fairness in judgment. And then number seven. Number seven says no hypocrisy. No hypocrisy. So for a relationship to succeed, you must come to a point where you do not pretend. Don't pretend. Be, be open and be transparent. Be in a position where you are able to share your views. Be yourself. In fact, let me say this. If you are in a relationship that you are not free to be yourself, there is a problem. Because one of the things that is necessary for a relationship to prosper is freedom. Freedom. You, you cannot pretend. How long can you pretend? When once you are not being yourself, you, you limit yourself. And, you know, you, you limit the prosperity of the relationship. So I've heard a lot of times people say to me, um, how do we do when people pretend? Uh, this, my simple answer is that if you focus on knowing the right thing about a person, the person will not pretend. Even if the person pretend, you will know what is the truth. Because that is what you focus on. And I advise people to say, for whoever you want to have a lasting relationship with, Focus on knowing the character of the person. That is very important. When you are considering the way the person treats you, the way the person does things, it comes to a point where you'll be able to know the true character of that person, the true nature of a person. People don't hide things for long. In fact, sometimes they, they think they're hiding it, but they're not hiding it. If you look well, you will see it. So, but when people come together and they're focusing on having sex and they're focusing on different other things, it blinds them from seeing what is right and what is wrong and being able to, you know, discern between what is right and wrong. So it is very important. Do not pretend in a relationship and look for people who do not pretend. Pretense, hypocrisy does not work because especially a relationship like marriage, you will definitely show your true color somewhere, somehow. And you will definitely find the true color of the other person somewhere, somehow. So these are the seven points I just wanted to narrate to you guys today. These are seven important characters that can work out a successful and a lasting relationship. Don't play with them. If you see that you cannot manifest this character, with anybody you want to relate with maybe that person you don't really love the person or maybe that person is not the right person for you if you cannot be disciplined you know with somebody you've chosen then there is a problem 
if you cannot be peaceable or your partner cannot be peaceable, there is a problem. You cannot be gentle considering other people in your dealings, then there is a problem. If you cannot be easy to be entreated, is, is either your way or the highway, then it, it doesn't really show you love the person and you care. So there is a problem. If you cannot be merciful and good works and show good works, that's showing love to your partner, there is a problem. You cannot be unpartial. I mean, no partiality. You cannot speak in fairness. There is a problem. You cannot be yourself. There is a problem. So this is what I believe. I believe that when you truly love a person, these characters will find a way of manifesting themselves because you truly love a person. And anybody who truly loves you will find a way to manifest these seven characters. These are very important characters for a successful and enjoyable relationship. So I just want to stop there and give room for questions. I just have one. Can you just quickly just um, elaborate again on um, number six, please? No partiality. Good. Number six, no partiality. Remember I gave an example in a certain situation. It simply means don't be selfish in your dealings. Don't take sides. Like the example I gave was like myself and my wife. Now we have our families and then one of our family members need help. Like my brother needs help and her brother needs help at the same time. I do not have to take side to say we must give to my brother first before, you know, her brother. No, if I am, if I'm to be somebody who is not partial, I have to say we are going to first look at the person who has an emergency situation and we are going to start from there. So it is very important not to be partial. If you want to build a successful relationship, don't be partial. Don't, don't take the side that favors you. Always choose that which is right. Stand for what is right. So what is right is like if you go to the hospital, if you drive in, there are emergency situations that the nurses and doctors will have to attend to speedily because that's life or death. That is not being partial. Not that, you know, there is an emergency situation and then the, the mayor's brother drives in and then they have to leave this and attend to the mayor. That's being partial. So partiality is taking side that favors you. But not being partial is choosing to do what is right, treating things according to their, you know, level of importance. I don't know if I've answered your question, Fortune. Yes, you have. Thank you very much. Okay, let me ask you guys one question. Which of these seven do you think is difficult to practice? Which of the seven things? We've talked about discipline, um, peace, being peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good works, no partiality, no hypocrisy. Which of the seven do you think is difficult to practice in a relationship? For my side, I think it's partiality, sir. <laughs> um, <it's, laughs> because uh, you might find out, like, I, maybe uh, as a guy, uh, maybe say, if you can put a light, let me uh, put a question. How far can we go in terms of, uh, on that point of partiality, how far can we go in terms of, uh, maybe doing things for the family. I, as a guy or a lady, can they maybe put restriction on how far I can go or for my family? I don't know if um, it's clear what I'm trying to... Okay, you're talking about how far can you go to defend your family or to fend for your family, that's to fight for your family, something like that? Yes, yes, Okay, the truth is this. When you are a child of God, you are going to stand for what the word of God says. Now, like the Bible says that God has no respect of persons. You know, um, it, it simply means that God is not partial. So to not be partial, I'm not saying you don't respect people. I mean, you do not, you know, take sides because of the position of a person or all that. 
Now, when it comes to family, you have to understand that your family is important to you just like your partner's family is important to him or her. That's one thing you have to understand. Now, you may not know your partner's family well, so they may not be so important to you as they are to your partner. But just know that just like your family is important to you, your, her family or your partner's family is also important. So now whenever you want to make a decision, make a decision with that mindset. So always ask yourself, if you know my partner was to make this decision regarding my family, how will I feel? And when once you can establish how you will feel that maybe you will not feel happy, then you don't try to do the same against your partner. So not being partial is being able to treat others as you would like to be treated. That's, that's just the basic. I mean, if you were in their position, how would you like to be treated? So I don't know if that explanation makes sense to you because I don't have a, a particular scenario here to explain, but do you understand what I'm trying to say? It's clear, sir. It's clear, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. How do you know if it's, if it's, I think I'm just confused between self-love and selfish. Mm. What if what you're doing is you choosing you this time? How do you know you're being selfish? I don't know if you understand what so I'm saying. The, the question you're asking is in regards to a relationship that you're in a relationship with somebody. How do you know that you are not being partial or selfish? Is that what you're saying? So basically I'm saying, what if what, you, what, what you're deciding to do is, is someone, is another person is basically your partner seeing it as selfish, but you not, you seeing it as self-love because all along you've been giving so much and now you can't anymore, you're choosing yourself and they still say it's selfish. So how do you um, make the distinction between the two? How do you know you're being selfish and only, or how do you know you, you're doing the right thing and just loving yourself? Okay. Okay, now let me just give you this word that, you know, <clears throat> I believe it can help you understand this. Now, whatever you want to do must have a good purpose. Purpose is very important. Now, if you want to take a decision or you want to, you know, make an action. Now, the thing is, what is the good purpose of that thing? Is, is that thing going to benefit other people? or it's just about benefiting yourself alone and other people are lacking. So selfishness is when you make decisions or you take actions that only benefit you while other people are lacking. It's just you, that's selfishness, you know? So if you are in a relationship and then you want to make a decision that, you know, is critical, now you must look at that at that decision based on the light of purpose what good purpose would your decision save for others as well as yourself what's the good purpose of it so if there is no good purpose of that for other people it's just about you and then while you are having that other people are lacking or they are being denied what they should have then that's selfishness it's like corruption. It's like being in office. You know, a person is in office and he, he takes the money that is supposed to go for others. And because he has the power, he takes it for himself and says he's loving himself. You know that that is wrong because, you know, that thing only benefits him and doesn't benefit others. It doesn't save the purpose for which he was being voted into that office. So I don't know if I'm explaining this enough for you. Um, I hear what you're saying. So how do you like, so how do you, you and your partner reach a mutual um, understanding? Because maybe what if you find yourself in a situation where you want things to go this way, né? and mm -hmm. they're going to go this way because you see it as beneficial, but your partner is not seeing it. How do you guys reach that mutual 
um, understanding. Because oh. maybe you have different views and they have different views. Okay, so your point is that this is something that you see it as beneficial to both of you, but your partner yeah. does not see it that way. Is that your question? Yes. Okay, you know, in, in such situations, you have to discuss. There are times that we must come to a compromise. In fact, anybody who's not ready to compromise um, for the well-being of his or partner and the relationship, you know, it's going to be a challenge. So that's where I talk about being easy to be entreated. Ask your partner for the reasons why he or she does not want to accept this thing. And then look at those reasons, you know, critically. Pay attention to those reasons. So if I'm in that position with my wife, I ask her, okay, these are my reasons for me, you know, choosing this thing. What are your reasons for being against it? So now I, I will try to tackle her own reasons to, you know, discuss in line with that. So I will say, okay, if, it's, if, if, if her reasons are good enough, then I will have to back down because she has a good reason for this. But if I can, you know, um, persuade her by her reads through her reasons and be able to convince her, that's fine. So hear the reason from the person and give your own reason and, you know, discuss and listen and you can come to a compromise somewhere. But let it be that in your hearts, you are seeking for the well-being of both of you and the relationship. Because the truth is that there are some things your partner may not see now, but will see in future. You know, right now, your partner does not see how important that thing is, but will see it in future. So if you are gentle, you can win your partner over by good understanding and good reasoning without trying to enforce your own way. So you, you have to find a, a common ground to agree on, you know, whatever you want to do, but listen to your partner too and look at it critically. So I, I don't know if I'm making sense with what I'm saying. Do you understand that? Yes, I do. Okay. Can I ask a question? Okay, you can ask a question, Ms. Ryan, yeah. Okay, so um, uh, uh, on partiality, mm. I want to know, does it apply like when you're in, still in a relationship with a guy? I, do you have to also choose between your family and his family or it only applies when you guys are married? Oh, yeah, partiality should apply in relationship too, you know. All those things apply in relationship. In fact, to me, if you cannot practice these things in relationship, you can practice them in marriage. So we're talking about, you know, seven things that guarantee a lasting relationship. Discipline. If you can't be disciplined in relationship, you can't be disciplined in marriage. Um, being peaceable, being gentle and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good works, no partiality, no hypocrisy. So it's, it applies in relationship, all of them. Relationship is where you practice them before you get into marriage. Because marriage is like you have made a covenant. It, marriage is like you've given your word on something. You have made a covenant. You made a promise that you are going to keep these seven things. And now you cannot. So partiality really applies in, in relationship before marriage. You must, and these are, these are signs of knowing who really loves you or who is right for you. If you have somebody or you find a person who has a partner who is always partial, always thinking about himself or herself first, uh, then you know that that relationship going into marriage is not going to work. It's not going to work. And one of the things I see um, about partiality is it also brings, brings forth pride. You know, um, somebody who is always partial uh, is somebody who's proudful doesn't want to see things any other way so it's just his way or her way and that is it so it applies in relationship too i hope i've answered your question ah uh, oh okay yes somehow a, a part <laughs> but what i want to do okay. what i want to know is okay the part that I'm talking about is when it comes to our families. Families, okay. Let's say I am uh, taking care of yes, I'm taking care of my family. 
okay. I'm uh, providing things for my family, right? Uh, Do I also have to consider my, let's say, my boyfriend's family to be buying them things before we are even here? That's the part. Not for him. Yes, I can be thinking about him and I won't be selfish towards him. And he can also be doing the same for me. But now it, I'm talking about including families. Do yeah. I put my his family's needs also in the relationship? Or oh, that comes okay. after? Oh, okay. I get you. You see, that's why I said you must give me a scenario to understand. Um, the truth is this. I believe that responsibility for you know your partner's family um truly begins you know when you're married yes you can practice it while you are in relationship while you're in relationship to me you are just showing love you know you are showing concern and understanding but it becomes a responsibility when you marry but before you marry it may not be a responsibility it may just be you um you know being loving you caring you know helping out where you can you know something like that so that's the way i see it because marriage is a commitment you have now committed yourself to be one with that person now you have to also share in his challenges his or her challenges so when once you marry you now have to try and split the benefits both ways you know that's that's what I can say. I don't know if that makes sense to you. Yes, and yeah, yeah, it does. It does. Oh, okay. So we're talking about seven things that guarantee a lasting relationship. Discipline, gentleness, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good works, no partiality, no hypocrisy. That we find in James chapter 3, verse 17. So maybe if you go through that, you will get more understanding from it. So thank you for joining us and uh, have a lovely evening next time. Good night. You may visit our website for details of our events and register at www.livingasoneevents.com. You can also get our books on relationships. We also do counseling for couples and singles who want to make the right decisions regarding their relationships. For more info, please contact us on 078-255-4517 or email us at livingasoneevents at gmail.com. God bless you.